Alright, here goes. What's up everybody? My name is Lola. And I am currently standing at rank 2 in the inferno. What I believe 475 KC. Let's make sure of that. 475 KC. Um I've been saying this for a while. I've been saying that I was gonna update my uh, my guide for 2023 for a long time, and I'm finally getting around to it today. I am live on Twitch right now, but I'm not reading my chat because I really want to focus and uh, give you all of my knowledge. Uh, but shout out everybody that is live watching right now. Hopefully you can learn a thing or two. And of course, if you're on YouTube, good luck on your grind. Welcome. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to break it down uh, as uh, as easily as possible. Uh, now, since my last guide, I've learned a lot of new techniques. So this guide is going to be uh, both for beginners and for more advanced people. Uh, it's going to be for everyone. It's going to be for everyone. Not only is it going to be for everyone, but it's going to be for any gear. Because in the end, during the waves, as long as you have a long range weapon, um, the techniques are all the same. Uh, so today, I will be using, I got Tebow, Blowpipe, I got Missouri. I almost have max gear. Uh, one of my viewers in the chat was kind enough to to lend me virtuous rope top uh, for me to try it out because I didn't even have a rope top since I went uh, DMing yesterday and lost a good chunk of my bank. Uh, this is why I don't have Zarite Van Braces either. But obviously, if you want to go max, max gear, you would use uh, Zarite Van Braces. And for beginners, I do recommend uh, using Ring of Suffering imbued. I do not have one anymore because I sold it. So I'm going to use Archer's Ring. Uh, but if you look, if you watch this guide, you might actually not even need the ring of suffering because you're going to be so clutch at flicking everything that it won't even be a problem. Uh, now that being said, before we go in, um, I'm going to go through my inventory a little bit. I got a, a regular bastion, a divine bastion. Normally I would bring a little more because I'm very comfortable, but I'm, I'm going to go like, you know, halfway, meet you guys halfway as far as the people uh, learning, watching this. If it's your first time, I would bring a little more bruise, maybe, uh, maybe like seven, maximum eight uh and also depending on your flicking skills or if you want to learn how to flick properly you could bring a spec weapon like an eldritch staff or sgs and stuff like that but personally i used to say that it was it was fine to bring a a, a spec weapon and it is still fine but i feel like you're gonna do yourself a favor by watching this guy and really taking the time to to study the techniques and break them down uh it's gonna save a lot of time so that being said, let me go through uh, through my plugins real quick. Uh, a few plugins that are really, really, really useful in the Inferno, uh, especially right now. This one for prayer flicking. It's called Prayer. Uh, that's what adds this little uh, this little pray flick indicator. Uh, that's very important, especially if you're learning. So you just go on Prayer, never hide Prayer Flick Helper, uh, and uh, show Prayer Orb tooltip, and then Prayer Flick location on the Prayer Orb. This is how I set it up personally. Now another one that's really good. You see a little blue tile under me? That's where your character is actually standing. So you see how like the tile goes faster than the character goes? So that's where your character is actually standing. If you didn't know that before now. Uh, this is in the tile indicator plugin. You turn on highlight true tile. I like a little blue color to, to differentiate it from my actual uh, ground markers. Another plugin that's really important guys is ground, uh, ground markers. Of course, this is what allows you to mark uh, mark tiles like so. We're going to have a bunch of very useful tiles uh, for the Inferno. Speaking of which, um, if you want to import my ground markers for the Inferno, just join the Discord. It's going to be in the description below uh, the video. And you go through the Inferno section and it's going to be the pinned post in there. Uh, so ground markers, whatever, however the hell you want them to look. Just go through, uh, just try some setting and stuff. Those are mine. We're going to copy them. Uh, another one that's going to be uh, extremely important is the NPC indicator plugin. Uh, personally, I highlight the tile, not the hull, uh, because otherwise, otherwise it's a little too cluttered. And you really want the tile because the Inferno is like a big, it's like a big puzzle. It's kind of like a big Tetris puzzle. And you'll see that as we go further in the in the caves. I know there's a way to like tag all of them. I think if you do like Jal, like Jal with a little star next to it. It's going to tag all the mobs in the Inferno. Personally, I have them like all marked separately. Um, so you do with that however you want. I have the Ignore Dead NPCs uh, ticked on. But I do not have the, the, the Hide uh, Dead NPCs in the uh, Entity Hider plugin. Because I do like to see my mobs die. It's not a sadistic thing. It's just what I've been used to. 
<laughs> so that's it. Uh, ignore pets. If you want to go in with your pet and flex, uh, like I normally do. But sadly, my pet died recently. I don't remember what I was doing, but my pet is safely in our done. Waiting to be recovered. Um, honestly, I think that should be it for the, for the, for the plugins. If there's something I forget, don't don't hesitate to to obviously uh, comment that in the the comment section below. Now, um, I use blood spells for my for my auto cast because 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 that way, like, if you want to heal up, you can flick while auto casting. Although you're mostly gonna be using your your uh, your ancient spells to freeze the nibblers. Now, I think that about covers it. I do want to state once again that this guide is for every, uh, every kind of gear, every kind of um, levels of knowledge. Uh, I have learned a lot over my 475kc. I do not claim to be the best at the Inferno, far from that. But uh, I think I'm decent at teaching people from the hundreds, if not thousands of testimonies uh, under my previous guides and the people that constantly come in my stream. To tell me that I helped them on their grind, which, which totally warms my heart. Uh, so yeah, that being said, I guess all that's left to do is to jump in. I'm gonna pre-pot. Although I'm 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 probably gonna be wasting my pre-pot from explaining a bunch of stuff. But my pre-pot normally is uh, anglerfish, bastion, anglerfish, and uh, saturated or saturated heart if you have it. But I, I do not have it anymore because I'm broke. Uh, so we're gonna pre-pot. We're gonna go in. It goes angler. Divine Bastion, Angler, and Stanima. Alrighty then, so. First stores. And let's go! Uh, normally, of course, if you can afford an Ellie Shield, it's better than Crystal Shield, but if you cannot, Crystal Shield is a great option. The only thing is that you're not gonna wear it at the beginning of the waves until wave 50, because it does give you a negative magic bonus i mean you can't call that a bonus if it's negative but uh magic malice remember that from my dnd days um so yeah make sure you're on a world that has good ping and uh, if you can get a world that has basically not only do you want good ping but you, you want like a good a good population which is like under 600 is really good so uh so you see here i have like a world that's 959 a world that's 561 they have the same ping but i will obviously use the one that has a fewer Fewer uh, players in it. There has been a lot of player with the with the Desert Treasure too, but it is Monday now during the week, and uh, I have the 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 extreme luck of being a full time streamer, so I get to do this shit in the middle of the day. You know the memes of your in unemployed friend uh, on a weekday. That's me. <laughs> so guys, it is time to send it. So the first thing you do, the first thing you do when you get in the Inferno. I click on this side right here, okay? You want to go there really fast? Then what you want to do is drop one of your potions, any of them. Just an just a empty uh, inventory slot. You freeze your nibs like that. And then you stand on that tile, okay? We're going to kill the, 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 the nibbler is still alive. And then let me tell you why. The first thing I did was drop that super restore. It is because... I am wearing a shield, blowpipe is two-handed, so that way when I go like this, ah, my shield is just right there uh, where it should be, and uh, it doesn't prevent me from switching to my blowpipe. Now, first thing that we learn right now, the bat safe spot. You see this bat here? It can't move because I'm right there. This is also a bat safe spot if the bat is over there, and this is a bat safe spot is if the bat is over there. From waves... From waves 1 to 34, you are going to start on this tile right here. Okay, this is my starting tile. Uh, and from waves 35 and up, you're going to start right here. The magic tile, we're going to get back on it later, but it is literally magic. Honestly, you're going to want to pay close attention to that. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Bass attack on a 3 tick cycle. So, let's get started. I'm going to kill this bat. Switch your mage gear. Ice Barrage ready. Barrage, I'm gonna sell on the bat safe spot. So that way one of the bats is safe spotted. In the meantime, I'm gonna kill that bat. Now, 
For you guys doing Inferno in 2023, you're very privileged because bats used to drain your stats and hit you through prayer. So uh, it's a lot different now. Consider yourself lucky. Once again, gonna kill the bat. Wave three. It's gonna be a nibbler only wave. So we don't need to pray either. Wave four, though, we got our best friend and our worst enemy that comes into play, and that is the blob. Um, you're gonna love this. So, pray range at the ready. Cast a freeze, and then I step behind the pillar because, you know, I'm trying to get my blob to come near me and not attack me from a distance. Now, you see these guys? I want to finish them off. One thing that's really good to do is come, go on that tile before you hit the, the nibblers that are incoming towards your pillar because uh, if they that way, if they go towards your pillar, they're not going to drag you out. Because if you're standing here, you're going to be able to cast uh, spells on your, or on, your, uh, on your nibblers that are on your pillar without stepping out the pillar. Uh, we call it the nibbler safe spot. I mean, I call it the nibbler safe spot. So you can remember that. Now, I gotta be honest, guys, the blobs, I never really know how to explain them, so I'm gonna explain them in, in several ways. Uh, basically, what they do, they're on like a six tick attack cycle. During the first three, they, uh, they scan, actually the first two, I really don't know, like I said. So, let, let's assume the first tick. During the first tick, they're gonna scan whatever overhead prayer you're using at that moment, okay? And then three ticks later, they're gonna attack you with the opposite. So... My, my trick for beginners, okay? My trick for beginners, like, if you're really, really, really beginning, you can always flinch, okay? So when you flinch, I would switch to my Tebow. Um, because uh, if you use blow vibe, you can get two hits in, but it's a little sweatier. But let's say you're using Tebow, right? Or your long-range weapon, whatever it is. So you protect from magic, you click on the blob, you step back, you click protect from missile. And you see how I attack me the opposite? So that's one way of going at it. Another way of going at it is, um, let's say you wanna, let's say you wanna stay there, right? Let's say you wanna stay there. You don't wanna be flinching. Uh, you don't, you don't wanna be one take alternating two. Basically, as soon as the blob sees you, as soon as the blob sees you, with, let's say your range prayer up, you switch to the other one, and then like as soon as it attacks, you switch back, and then you kind of try to get a rhythm going like that. Okay, that's like the the vague method. Uh, but it works let me show you so if you go like this praying range i'm gonna switch to mage immediately as soon as it attacks me i switch back to range and i switch back to mage as soon as it attacks i switch back to range switch to mage as soon as it attacks switch back to range switch to mage et voila now another way to deal with the blobs is the one tick alternate flick so one tick alternate flicks means that Every tick, you're gonna you're gonna switch between your prayers like that. Now, if you don't know what a game tick is, look at this little bar here on my prayer on my prayer orb. Every single time, the bar is on the left. It's a new tick that begins. Okay, so one, two, three, four. You want to click the next prayer as soon as the bar hits the left. So it goes like this: two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so. Another way to deal with the blobs is to one take alternate. I'm going to show you how it goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So if I keep this up, that blob is never going to hit me. Now that's going to come that's going to come into play later when we um, when we deal with blobs and other mobs. Now when you're one take alternating, you want to keep an eye on what attack style the blob attacks you with so that way if you have to exit the one tick flick cycle and you know it's been attacking you mage you're gonna stop on mage to exit the one tick flick cycle now for my gamers here for my gamers here are a little advanced uh maybe you have a few kc in the inferno already you've been hunting your combat achievement diaries you've been hunting your pet stuff like that i'm about to show you the zero prayer blob flick so this method uses zero play zero prayer on blobs uh you need to be able to count your ticks so what you're going to do is, on the first tick, you're going to pray range, you're going to turn it off. On the fourth tick, you're going to pray mage, you're going to turn it off. So it goes like this. Range, off, empty tick, mage, off, empty tick. Range, off, empty tick, mage, off, empty tick. Range, off, empty tick, mage, off, empty tick. Now you can do the opposite. I started with range, you can start with mage. Mage, off, empty tick, range, off, uh, empty tick. Mage, off, empty tick, range, off, empty tick, mage, off, empty tick, range, 
of MT Take. So the MT Take allows you to, to the the MT Take allows you to to move around uh, as long as you're as long as you you keep the cycle going between the actions. So those, this is it for blobs. This is it for blobs. Uh, for now, I think that 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 pretty much uh, sums it up pretty good. There is another method called two tick flicking. I would be honest with you guys. I have 475 KC and I never bothered to learn it. But I'm not saying it's not good. It's actually the superior method. I'm just a stubborn little kid, and uh, I decided to 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 do it like that. And 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 that's it. I got no excuse for real. I'm just lazy. Maybe after this guide, since I said that, I'm a uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and learn it properly. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Next wave. One yeah, empty tick. Okay. Now, when the blob dies here, you don't want to move, okay? If you kill it from that side, you don't want to move because look how these guys are aligned. Only the little ranger can hit me right now, which is exactly what you want, okay? So you're going to hit this guy. Now, 141 XP drop, I know they're all dead, so that's not a problem. Next wave, free range, get your freeze ready. Going to hit those nibblers, switch to mage because you saw, as soon as he sees me, I know that he's going to attack me with the opposite style, right? Now, you remember what I said about the, the nibbler safe spot here? We're going to finish off these guys here. And then I want to get the blob closer because I want to step out of my pillar. So I'm going to go over here, uh, over here, pray range against the bat. And while I kill it. Now, something that I learned after my 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 uh, my last guy, because I used to kill these guys from the bottom of the of the pillar, which is also a really good option for the later waves if you got some mobs over there. But on the earlier waves, uh, you want to kill this guy over here. Why? You remember what I just showed you? How if you killed it from there, they were stacking up like that? This is basically the equivalent before when the, the, the blob is on the west side of the pillar. We're going to do this. I'm going to use a one to click this time. So when it dies, I don't want to move. I just want to pre-range. Pre-range. Now you see how they're aligned? Once again, only the range can hit me. I'm going to get it. 93, they're not dead. 71. Okay, so you see? Ranger is dead. I'm going to switch to mage because I know only my mage is left. If I want, uh, I can go back to my start tile. That way it's a little uh, less sweaty. A little less sweaty. Once again, guys, pre-range. You're going to pre-range at the beginning of every wave until wave 34. Now we see my blobs on the other side. I'm good. The bats, they can hit me. It's okay. Focus on your nibblers. The only things that bad do if you're, uh, if you're playing range now is that they drain your stamina. But, hey, you're learning right now. You're not in a hurry. You're not speed running. You're chilling. So it doesn't matter, man. You can just sit here and wait for your stamina to go back up. If it comes to this. Now, we got another positioning from the blob for the blob now, which is good. I'm about to show you how to kill it from there. Now, the important part here is going to be that as soon as that big blob dies, I'm going to step on the magic tile. And I'll show you why when it happens. I'm using zero prayer blob flick like that. Okay, it's dead. I got to click immediately as soon as it dies. Now, you see here, the reason why I did that is because I have two of them that can hit me, but at least the melee the melee was corner safe spotted, basically. Corner safe spot is something we're going to talk about extensively. Now, wave seven is going to be two blobs, so free range. Get your ice barrage ready. I switch because I, I know it saw me. I know it saw me praying range, so I switch immediately. I'm using my, I'm using my like, little, little method where... I kind of eyeball it, right? So we're going to kill those guys. And then I'm going to do a one tick prayer flick to go get this guy over there. Because I don't know what, what cycle this other blob was in, right? That's it. Now I'm going to isolate them. Because I want this guy to come closer to me. Once again, I know this guy saw me pray mage, so I switched the range immediately. I can one tick flick here if I want. Whatever method, whatever floats your boat. And honestly, guys... Blobs are not blobs are not all that. They're squishy as hell. So if you're if you're like if you're like in a pickle like that and, and that wave stresses you because you got two blobs and everything, just just straight up pre pre uh pre range and tank it. Pre range and tank it if, and DPS it down with your blow pipe. Trust me, it's gonna go down. It's gonna go. It's gonna fall like a leaf. Uh, so once again, guys, the flinching method. Uh, if you uh, if you didn't uh, catch it on the first uh, on the first pre range. Hit, step back, pray mage, et voila. Now I can show you the the one the the no prayer, the no prayer flinch method too. So that that involves turning your prayer off at, or your prayer on after clicking the blob. So it goes like this. So it goes one 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 one. 
So it goes blob prayer off back prayer off. So that's flinching, but that way you're using zero prayer. You can uh, rinse and repeat that part of the video. Maybe clip it. Just uh, play it while you sleep or something like that. If you want to perfect that. Uh, also, guys, you're super restored. Don't worry about it. I think stuff despawns after like two hours in the inferno. So maybe like once every like what 30 waves, you can juggle it uh, if you want. Don't forget to drink your water, by the way, if you're watching this. And let's go. So uh, I'm going to take a little sip of super restore. Let's keep going. All right. Once again, I don't move. Only the ranger can hit me. Ranger isn't dead yet. That's good. Ranger is dead. I switched to my mage spray. Because this guy's going to step out. That way we safe. Now next wave is Nibbler only. Because after that, we got another mob that comes into play. And that is the Millier. The Millier is really fun, honestly. The Millier has got to be one of the most... It's, I mean, it's the most fun when you know what you're doing. But it can be very annoying too. So, uh, you get your freeze ready. Barrage. Uh -huh. If you get 112 speed drop with an ice barrage, you know they're all dead. So now, the melee has a few interesting mechanics. Well, it has one interesting mechanics. Is that every, like, what, like, 28 to 33 game takes or something? I don't know the exact science. Uh, but it can dig to you. And I'll show you uh, in a second how it does that. In 28 to 33 game takes. I'm just saying, I, that's a number that popped in my head. I feel like I've seen that somewhere, but I have no idea. To be honest. Go check the OSR's wiki. So, if you're standing over here, if it digs... We're going to corner safe spot it. Welcome, guys, to the corner safe spot. One of your most useful mechanics in this cave. Uh, from here, you can attack. You can attack him like that. You can corner safe spot a melee all the way down to that tile. So you see how this corner is still like holding it together? So this is as far as you can go. Corner safe spotting a melee. Once you go down, you cannot go back up because... It, okay, it dug. Now, the melees... You can safe spot them from this from this tile and this tile. So if a melee is here or here, you can you can stand here and safe spot it. And if a melee is either on the east side or the west side, you can stand on this tile. This tile and this tile, they're gonna be able to go around it, okay? Uh so I'm gonna show you guys the I'm gonna wait for it to dig again. I'm gonna show you the corner safe spot one more time because I didn't show you the corner from here. So if you're here, you cannot attack the melee. Look what happens if you attack it. It goes like this, you get dragged out. You're gonna have to go down and tile before you do it, okay? Um, now, we're gonna, we're gonna start learning about the, the mobs attack cycles. Guys, if you know how to count to four, the Inferno is easy. It's a piece of cake for real. So, the melee attacks on a four tick cycle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So when it starts moving like that, that's the one. One, two, three, four. So right now I'm lazy flicking. That means that I'm turning off my prayer on one. I'm turning it on four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is called lazy flicking. It uses zero prayer. And it's a lot less sweatier than one tick flicking. It's a lot less clicks. I lazy flick a lot, honestly, because, uh, because shit, like I do so much Inferno. You know what I mean? I got to save myself. Um, so once again, let me show you the safe spot over there. And let me show you how, if I go over here, it goes around the corner. It goes around the corner. Like that. Once again, over here, it can go around the corner like that. But if you're here, though, you're safe. Uh, okay, so that's it. That's about it for the, that's about it for the, um, the milliers. Actually, no, there's one more thing I would like to show you about the millier. So let's observe here how it digs when I'm on this side. Let's take a moment for that. So when I'm on this side, I can just go one tile below, right? And it's going to be perfectly aligned. I can go down like that. But what if I went on this side and I waited for it to dig? You can mark this tile if you want. If you're in the middle, for example. Okay, so you see how it dug differently here? Instead of being perfectly aligned in it, with its corner, with, with its uh, corner tile on me, it's like two tiles below. 
so you just gotta take that into account if ever you're you're you want a corner stay spot the the melee from that side another thing that i do have to mention about the melees is i told you they dig every x amount of time if ever they hit you if ever they hit you that timer resets that timer resets every time they hit you so they can only dig if they're not attacking you basically uh, I think that covers it for the melee right now. Manipulating the melee is my favorite thing in the Inferno. Positioning yourself so that you always know where he's going to dig. And acting accordingly is great. Like I always say, don't manipulate your friends. Don't manipulate your family or your significant other. But manipulate the melee all you want. It is there for that. Alright, let's move on. Let us move on. Back to my mage gear. I don't need to pray range until wave 12. In this case, catch a freeze. Oh, okay, that's cool. Let me show you something here. Oh, uh, wait. No, never mind. It died. <laughs> I'm still going to explain what I wanted to show you guys after I kill this bat. So, if let's say, if let's say you have a nibbler on the pillar over there, you can wear your Kodai. If you're standing on this tile here, click the nibbler and your character is going to step out three tiles. Now, the melees, you can step out of the pillar three tiles uh well two i mean two tiles away uh and they're not gonna come around the corner so once again i'll show you on this side here so if it's here i can go all the way to here but i cannot go here because it's gonna come around uh so yeah i think that actually covers covers it for the melee keep going Wave 11, get your freeze ready, maze gear on. So here I'm just going to pre range because that bat is there. 71, okay guys, so 71 XP drop, you know that one nibbler is dead. 91 XP drop, two nibblers are dead. 112 XP drop, three nibblers are dead. So that can help you. I know it sounds like just stupid numbers, but like it, it can really help you decide what your next move is going to be in some instances. So here, I don't really, I'm, I'm going to kill the bat. I'm gonna kill the bat because, you know, I'm, you know, like I said, like my stamina is, isn't really a problem, and all that stuff. Uh, something I forgot to mention at the beginning of this guide, I set my quick prayer to uh, protect from missile and rigor. Now that's useful if you know how to one tick flick, especially um, because it it greatly like like right now it greatly uh, increases your damage output, and uh, sometimes that can be a life saver in some situation. Now, the reason why it range is because, obviously, we don't have mage minions uh, until later. Now, wave 12, like I said, we're going to have blobs coming in. So, I'm going to start praying range again at the beginning. Okay, we're, we're safe here. See? 96. I know I got more than two. So, I know they're all frozen. 67 should be dead. And now, we're just going to kill this guy once again. If I wanted to if I wanted to, to kill it fast before it digs, um, you, can, uh, you can do that. Otherwise, if you don't want it to dig, you can always just three... Four, one, two, three, four. Lazy flick it. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Et voila. Now, once again, remember, I killed this blob here. I got to step on the magic tile when it dies. I'm going to use my zero prayer blob flick. So it goes click, mage, off, range, off, empty tick. Mage, off, empty tick. Range, off, empty tick. Mage, off, empty tick. Range. You pray range here. Kill these little guys. Okay, you see the, the, the ranger is dead and the melee can't attack me because his corner safe spotted. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pray mage, kill this guy. And then I can I can do whatever I want with this guy. I can use a blow by spec on it to regen my health. Okay, back to our mage gear. Free range, freeze ready. So I saw at the beginning of the wave the guy saw me pray range. So I as I step behind the pillar. As I step behind the pillar, I immediately switch to the opposite. Now, guys, part of the reason why the magic tile is magic, you see how this how this melee is next to the blob instead of behind the blob? That is because of the magic tile. When you use the magic tile fast enough, your stacks are going to align so much better. And see, now I don't have to flick the blob to hit the melee because it's just they're just one next to one another, so I get to deal with them separately. So honestly, like like. Like, it does remove the necessity for a lot of flicking. Uh, it does reduce the necessity for flicking in a lot of instances. I'm, I will focus on that a lot more in this guide too. How to de-stack de your, uh, your stacks. 
uh, and all that stuff because uh, I did learn that somewhat, but not somewhat recently, but like ever since my last guide, and it is a tremendous help. Uh, so we're gonna go for a little one tick flick here. So basically, if you want to save a lot of prayer, you, you need to learn how to turn on your prayer after you click the mod. So let's say you're flinching, right? You're not going to try and do all that sweaty. One thing flicking all that stuff you want to you still want to turn on your turn on your prayer after you step out and over time it's going to save like dozens of prayer points and uh, it's important in the inferno so let's say let's say i want to flinch it i'll put on my tebow i click click range step back mage turn off i know that's dumb but i saved the prayer point there you know what i mean once again the zero prayer method it goes click range off step back mage off so that's zero prayer Click, range, off, step back, mage, off. Everything is a tick. Tick, 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 tick. So here we got our nice little stack all aligned like that. That's perfect. 111, I know two are dead. In the case of these little guys. Okay, next wave. Free range. Get your freeze ready. But once again, it saw me pray range. So I, I, I stepped the mage right away. Now, I see those bats coming in. And it's okay. I'm just going to kill them. I'm just going to pray range kill them. Uh, I definitely will have time to kill them before uh, before the melee digs. That's really not a problem. Otherwise, what you could have done here is stand here and get ready to... Let's say, let's say you're, you're running this on like an account that has like 40 range or some bullshit like that. Probably not though. And you, you don't have time... You actually don't have time to kill the bats. You, I could have corner safe spotted it, and then I could have prayed against the blob while I killed the melee slowly. Or actually, yeah, maybe I would have killed the blob first if, if ever your DPS is absolute ass like that. But that's that was an option here that you could have done, basically. Uh, this is what I mean by manipulating the melee and, and always thinking about positioning yourself so that you're never taken by surprise uh, by the melee. You always got to think ahead. Of the melee the melee is not going to think for you it's here to kill you it really wants you dead so you gotta you gotta you gotta compensate by always being aware of your surroundings now i'm gonna kill this guy right here now as we remember if we kill over there if we kill it over there we do this i see those guys are dead i know my it's my little major that's stuck here eventually you're gonna get a lot especially if you watch these guys and you pay attention you're gonna understand the little Blob stacks uh, better for sure. Okay, now these guys saw me at the same time, so they're gonna be good. I just gotta, I just gotta keep the, I just gotta keep praying against them. Uh, if you don't know, okay, let's say you don't like, you're lost in a cycle, right? You could just start a one tick flick, and they might hit you once, but if you start one tick flicking, they're never gonna hit you twice. Now, as you, as I said earlier, you see how they're attacking me range. So when that melee digs, when that melee digs, I'm gonna exit the the flick by praying range. Hold on, I'll show you guys. So you see, I saw the melee dig. I exited the flick by praying range. And now I just got to focus on this guy while I kill the melee. Another thing you could do is step over there on the east side of the pillar and kill the blob. If you're more comfortable, that would definitely be like the, the more like beginner thing to do. But in this case, I have some experience. This guy saw me pray a uh, mage, so he's going to attack me range. I'm going to wait for it because I want to kill it in a good position, right? Now... If you kill this guy from here, it's the same thing. You step on the talus right next to it when it dies. Uh, in this case, it, it doesn't safe spot any of them, but at least they're all clamped up. And you can uh, you can hit all of them with your blood spells. Uh, yeah. Again. Now, next wave, 16 is pretty easy. That's two melees. So if you know how to pray melee, you should be fine. Uh, I hope that if you made it as far as trying the Inferno, uh, you, know, you, you know how to click the pray melee button. Otherwise, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe familiarize yourself. 141, I know all three are dead. Once again, I don't need to pray range or nothing. Beginning of this wave, it's two melees. Gotta get your freeze ready, though. It's nothing stressful. Look, I still got time. He's still very far. 91, I know both of them are dead. I'm just gonna wait here. Chill. Kill this guy when he gets there. If they dig, I'm gonna corner safe spot them. Because they're gonna dig at the same time, most li mostly, most likely. Or very close to one another. And here what you can do is either do this. 
So it comes around the corner, you can hit it? Or I could have gone like on the, the south side and, and safe spot it from that side. Now it dug, I could have gone over there. But I think it's a good habit to take for the later waves to know how to really deal with most of your mobs from the north side of the pillar. Because if you got a major and a ranger there, you don't want to be on that side. <laughs> you do not want to be on that side at all, trust me. So once again, remember you do not equip your crystal shield at the beginning of the waves until wave 50 and up. Now 17 is nibbler, nibbler only because the wave after that we got another one of our best friends that gonna enter the play and that is the ranger it is the cutest it's arguably the cutest mob in the inferno uh and by cute i mean horrifyingly creepy but i i, I like it though it, it really is my favorite mob in the inferno it's really easy to deal with it's squishy and stuff like that so important from now on to pre-range at the beginning uh we're good we have to stay spotted so we're cool 112 all my nibblers are dead uh, and then I'm going to show you guys the attack cycle. Once again, the Ranger is also on a four tick attack cycle. Pay attention to the animation. The first tick is when it starts ducking its head like that. And the last tick is when it goes back up. So we're going to counter ticks. We're going to pay attention to that. I'm just going to flick it for a second while without attacking it. So once again, we want to step out the pillar uh, before turning on our prayer. If you're, if you're not comfortable with it, of course, uh, especially if you bring like a spec weapon and all that uh to regen your prayer you can definitely pray before stepping out i'm trying to give you like the optimal the best knowledge there is right so you step out one two three four 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 so again if i lazy flick i turn off on one i turn on on four four one two three four one two two three four and okay so for example let's say let's say i'm dealing with a ranger and a blob right we're gonna one take alternate this guy so in this case i would start the the alternate flicking on the one so one two three four 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 one tick flick if ever if ever you're a gamer like that or on your prayer orb like this if you want to kill it faster that about sums it up for the ranger all right age gear Prey range freeze at the ready okay once again pretty easy spawn 92 i know one of them is getting away in this case it was the one i already had targeted here I would one tick flick to, to save a little bit of prayer because the bat and the the bat is on three tick attack cycle and the, the ranger is on a four tick attack cycle, so you know what I mean. You can't really lazy flick that. Because they're not at the same time. Uh once again, pretty easy. We're gonna kill this guy. I'm gonna one tick flick to save prayer because I do I do waste a lot more prayer than I normally would since I'm explaining to you guys a, a bunch of stuff, leaving my prayer up a little uh longer. Than usual. One, two, three. It is dead. Need you here. Free range. Freeze ready. Now, also on the nibblers, guys, something that's important, you're always trying to target the one that's in the middle. You always, always, always want to do that because it, you know, since it's a three three tile uh attack radius, uh you're you're most likely gonna catch all of them. Whereas if you hit the one on the side, one of them is always gonna go away. So that's something to take note of when dealing with the nibblers. Now here I'm in my bat safe spot. I'm chilling. As you can tell, I'm safe after this bat dies because the other bat is, is blocking the other the ranger. But when this one dies, my ranger is going to come over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step here. And honestly, like always take time to step back behind your pillars. Don't be a hero. You're learning. Uh, if you're learning, that is. Otherwise, go ahead. Be a goddamn chat. Especially if you know how to one-tick flick. Then you can like... You're always safe. All right. Your range. He's ready. Get the one in the middle. Now this guy. You see? When it stops moving, that means it saw me. I'm going to switch to mage. Once again, as soon as it attacks mage, I switch back to range. As soon as it attacks mage, I switch back to range. And then like two ticks after... I switched the mage. Now I'm gonna come over here. That way, that guy's gonna that guy's gonna come behind my pillar. I can lazy flick the ranger. 
Bye about. Yeah, all right. Uh, blob time. Blob time, blob time. We don't move. Great range. 141, they're all dead. Yo, Virtue's kicking ass, Loki. I'm surprised. I am surprised. Great range. Freeze ready. Now, you see this guy saw me. I'm going to switch to mage. Go over there. Uh, now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just I'll just tank the blob, okay? I could I could honestly one tick flick, but uh, but the bad would hit me and stuff like that. So, I'm just going to tank the blob while I, I finish the guy off. Now, from here, from here, I can get it without stepping out the pillar. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray against the blob. For sure. And since I don't want to kill this guy from a distance, I'm going to come over here, pre range deal with the the, the bat and the, the ranger on this side. And then after that, when the blob is closer, we're going to deal with that. I'm going to kill the blob first because since the blob has like the little spawns, it has more chances of uh, dealing damage to you. So if you want to start your ways with 99 uh, HP every time, um, that's, just like a, that's just like a good habit to have. And the ranger is honestly my favorite mob to heal on. It's the best mob to heal on. It's magic resist must be low, I guess. I don't know. I don't really look at stats or or game numbers like that. So yeah, now normally, normally the way I do Inferno, I would have had uh, I would have you I would have had used one super restore uh, by a wave thirty two. But uh, like I said, I've been using a lot more prayer teaching you guys. So now that I use this, I can just uh, take that off my mind and uh, pick back up, pick pick that. Ah, oh my god, pick my super restore back up and keep going. Oh wait, switch my blow pipe. Gonna be a little faster. Plus, runes are expensive as hell. All right, the range. Freeze ready. Here, I'm good. Like bad is range. Bad is range. Ranger is range. So all I gotta do is spray range. Kill this guy too. I mean, I wouldn't have to kill the bat right away, but it's there, so I'm, I'm gonna take care of it. Now, I'm gonna switch over to my blob. Do a prayer blob flick. One, two, three, one. When it dies, see, I was a little slow there. I was a little slow there, so I didn't corner safe spot the melee, but at least it's still important to do it, even if you're a little slow, because that way they're all clamped up together and your blood spells can affect all of them equally. Uh, a rule of thumb in the inferno if you're praying against something kill the other thing if that makes sense to you <laughs> don't kill the thing you're praying against if you're in a pickle and you have to choose and you have two things attacking you at once All right, free range, ice barrage. My blobs are safe spot here. I'm good. Now this guy's gonna drag me out, but well, I'll just take a blob hit, bro. Like you can take a blob hit or two. Now the proper thing would be to one take out and inflict. Look at the ranger. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay, um, I'll explain how I knew when to break the the flick cycle uh, That's kind of something that like that's kind of something that happens in my head. I never really thought about it that much Hold on. Um, Okay, I won't explain it now because uh, I'll explain it when I'm actually flicking because it's a little easier right now Like I'm trying to explain I'm like uh... <laughs> So I'm gonna kill this guy Dead. I go over here. 141. It should all be dead. Uh, now, okay. If you got a mob corner safe spot, because you can corner safe spot any mobs if you're standing directly on the corner. That's another reason why the magic tile is magic. Now, you mo you could be thinking I could step over here and kill it, but the thing that happens is if you step over here to kill it, it's gonna go down one tile, and that's fine. But look what happens if I go down here instead. What if I do this? I'm praying against it. I'm praying against it. 
I pray against it. Maybe melee digs or something like that. Oh, I can just go here, pray against the melee, and this guy's corner safe spotted again. Whereas if I did this, it's too late. I can't, I can't corner safe spot it again. I got to deal with it immediately. We're going to do that. We got see is dead. Free range. Go like that. 111 to our dead. Free mage. Most of the time, the two that die is not going to be the major because you're using mage. And it's got greater magic resist. So. Oh, see, I misclicked. I misclicked. Now we got ranger, major, uh, ranger and melee. So here, okay, here you saw it was 91 XP drop, so I knew two were dead, and then 71 XP drop. So when I saw the 71 XP drop, I knew I could just step right back to my pillar. Now, a chill way to deal with this would be to hit the melee. Would be to hit the melee while you uh, while you flick the ranger. Now I'm gonna teach you how to off tick mobs by two ticks. Okay. Take my time doing it. So, if you want mobs to be off tick by two tick, okay, what you're gonna do is on the first tick of this guy's attack cycle. So the one you're currently fighting, the one that's currently hitting you, on the first tick, if you step out in line in the line of sight of the other one, they're gonna be two ticks apart. If I do this, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two. Now they're two things apart. Now another thing that's really cool here is you can do a zero prayer flick here. So turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on. Pay attention to their attack cycles here. One, 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 four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, four. I can do this for literal hours. I would not lose a single prayer point. And then if you want to do an action, you can go back. One. Four, one, four, one, four. Slow this motion down if you're watching the video. Uh, if you want to like, you know, maybe have a better grasp on it. But this is how you off tick any mob that's on a four tick attack cycle. So that is the ranger, the major, and the milliers. You step out on the the first mob's first tick, so that the when the second mob sees you, you get they're gonna be two ticks apart. That is extremely useful. Like, yeah, that's that's gotta be the biggest cheat code I learned in the Inferno. The zero prayer, like two tick alternate flick, like that is insanely useful. I love it. And plus, it's so satisfying. Like, you just feel like you're like the king of the Inferno. You know, you're like, ah, oh, shit, they can't do nothing. To, they can't touch me. So here, uh, I'm just gonna go here. You know, pray against the melee, lazy flick it to. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now, guys, when I do the inferno, I'm gonna be honest. My eyes are like ninety percent of the time on this little thing. Like I can flick without it, but it's a reflex. As soon as you got your flick, as soon as you got your flick set up, and you know you're in the right cycle and stuff like that, you just lock in on that thing and make sure that your timing's good. Now, if you don't know how to one tick flick uh, like that, I, I will link uh, my short. I have a 30 second guide that teaches you everything you need to know about it. Uh, it's going to be in the description below. Free range, ice barrage, ice beerage. Okay, now we good here. We good here. Like, they're not going to drag me out. Here they're dead. I'm going to kill the. I'm going to kill the thing. And then we're gonna kill the we're gonna kill the melee once again. What we can do if we don't want it to dig, there's no reason why we wouldn't want it to dig. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, four, one, four, four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, four. One, four. Oh my god, it's satisfying. Now here, see this bat? I can kill it from the safe spot. Although I could have killed I could have killed my ranger first. Like there was no. There's no like proper order. Um, I do like to bring my mobs back close to the pillar. That way I'm closer to my start starting position too. Uh, and stuff like that. Take a little sip. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two,
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, we're gonna use it. We're gonna put the magic tile to use here. Nibbler safe spot to get my nibblers without the blob seeing me. Not there yet. Okay, so you see that little blob here? I could, I could attack the, I could attack the melee while flicking the blob, but I could also do that. And then boom, all of a sudden, magic tile working its magic. I can just kill this guy with no worries in the world. It digs, we corner safe spot, we can't hit it from here, otherwise these guys gonna see me. So I'm gonna go like that. Hit it. Okay, so now we got our first stack of the run. Uh, it's a ranger and a blob. Now, we're gonna use the one take alternate flick. I, actually, I'm gonna show you all the methods uh, once again. So you can flinch in these cases. If you're a beginner, you don't wanna learn how to one take flick, you're like CBA for real. Switch my T-Bow once again, great range, hit, step back, great mage, turn it off. Once again, great mage, hit, step back, great mage, turn it off. If you want to get scientific with the flinch, we can do a zero per flinch. So it goes, tick, 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 tick. So, Flick, range, turn off, step back, mage, turn off. That's a zero prayer flinch. And now, the real way to deal with this is to one take alternate flick. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to turn on your protect from missile. And then you're going to click on this guy. And then one tick later, you're going you're gonna to start the alternate flick. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, once again, I knew I knew it was gonna die because I saw my XP drops, um, and I knew that the the blob was attacking me mage, so that's why I exited praying mage after the ranger's attack. When that guy dies here, we don't move. Free range. Now I see the, the the when the ranger dies. If you don't want to have to deal, or you really want to be like fully protected, I step back behind and then I just separate them like that. That's especially useful if you're running this on a pure. Uh, I will do another video for pures to go into more details on how to deal with blobs when you're a pure because it's a big part of uh, Inferno on a pure is when and how to kill the blobs. Okay. Once again, uh, I see this boss gonna attack me and see, look, the, the, the ranger is actually safe spot behind the blob. So what I can do is just like flick the blob while I kill this bad. And then right after that, I'm just gonna go here, frame melee. Three, four, one, two. If I can step on the magic tile, it's even better. Cause that way they're, they're gonna be one next to one another instead of one behind each other. Uh, it was a little sweatier cause it, re it required me to take the risk to click, uh, under the the melee you could you can definitely like right click walk, walk there if you want to be safe but once again the magic tile working it's magic otherwise we would have had a stack that would have been uh, one behind another and uh, we just learned how to deal with that so cba for real it saves you the magic tile saves you a ton of flicking that's the lesson here I'm gonna step back behind my pillar, wait for this guy to come here, be in position. One, off, empty tick. One, off, empty tick. One, off, empty tick. One, off, empty tick. Those are dead, hyper melee. Finish this guy off. Okay, see that's a little more annoying. I'm gonna one tick flick the ranger and the blob while I kill the bat. That's a that's a pretty that's kind of annoying for real. Maybe in this case, honestly, I would allow myself to pray rigor if I was you. Oh, 
Okay, so now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the melee to dig, okay? I'm gonna wait for the melee to dig while I want to flick these guys, because I got that thing set up. Just fine. Now, see how it dug? I'm a corner safe spotted. Now, I only have to deal with the blob now. I'm gonna use a little blow pipe spike on it. Now, one thing you can do here is, like, run really fast over there, for example, free range Melee doesn't have time to come over. You have time to, like, hit this guy, although... That's not necessarily better, you know what I mean? But it's a little less sweatier of a, of a flick. Sometimes the blobs are annoying to deal with. Now, this guy, this that guy dug over, but I, I know that I was going to have time to kill the ranger because they go down pretty fast. But if you want to know, okay, so basically, to know if when a melee digs is going to be on the same tick as the mob that's currently attack, attacking you is... If you're able to pay attention to the melee when it digs, if it digs on the first tick, so on the tick where it attacks you, where the damage being calculated of the mob that's currently attacking you, it's going to be on the same tick. If it digs on any other tick besides that, it's going to be on a different tick, you're good. Now, if it's on a different tick, but you don't know exactly what tick it's going to be on, a good way to deal with that is to reverse, I call it reverse lazy flick, but it's, it's not a thing, that's just how I call it. So... You know how when I, when I lazy flick, I turn it off and uh, I turn it off on one and on on four. So basically, instead of turning it off, you're just gonna switch to the opposite. So if if let's say in that case the melee would dig to me and I was I was fighting a ranger, so it would be like one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four etc. That way you don't need to know exactly what uh, tick it's on, you're going to be protected. You just got to make sure that it's not on the same tick. Otherwise, it's going to eat you up. Once again, if we kill it from here, we don't move. Only the ranger can attack us. 129! Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go for it. I, I was feeling feral, I guess. <laughs> I was feeling feral... Okay. 31, a double blob wave. So this is where this is where learning how to one-tick flick is really clutch. Now these guys saw me at the same time. That's actually a pretty easy wave 31. You just flick the blobs like that. I'm gonna come over here. Come over here. I'm just gonna kill my melee. Take it easy. Once the melee dies, what I could do, look, what I could do is come over here while I kill the melee. Because that way, when the melee is dead, I get to chill a little bit. I get to chill a little bit, take it easy. Maybe go to the bathroom, something like that. You know, whatever you want to get a glass of water, you want to drink your water. The magic tell is here for you. Now, once again, we don't step to the middle tab, we step down like that to kill him. I'll take my time, heal on it. I like, I like, honestly, I don't need to start my waves at 99 HP with the experience I got, but it's like an OCD thing. It annoys me when I'm not 99 HP. <laughs> That's why my runs are still so long. I really like taking my time. That's right. If you're learning, you gotta take your time. You got to take your time. Now, I could one thing flick these guys. Any 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 method I taught you for the blob before it works. Now here what I would do is I would isolate them a little bit. You could flinch them, so I would go like this, like a uh, you can't really you can't really flick the the low guys and the big blob right so i would i would act like i'm lazy flicking this guy uh the important part basically when you're flicking a blob and something else is that you gotta start with the prayer that protects against the attack of the mob that hits you right away right because the blob only hits you like three ticks later so that's the only thing you gotta think about so if it's a blob in a major you're gonna step out praying mage if it's a blob in a ranger you're gonna step out play, praying range etc Hundred eleven. I know two are dead. Most likely not the major because I'm using mage. I can immediately switch to mage in my blowpipe. La thirty two. Thirty two. I believe is uh one ranger, two melees. We're just gonna try and catch catch her freeze as fast as possible here, and then uh, I'm gonna magic tell this shit as as a reflex. You know what I mean? Like 
We would have been fine without the magic tile there, but why not? You know, let's give it a shot. Sometimes your stacks are just a lot better. Now, you see here, when I said that that if you're praying against something, kill something else. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm praying against the ranger, but I'm killing the melee. I'm gonna keep flicking until that guy comes. One, two, three, four. Now, I dug. I come over here. And I kill. So next wave is going to be two rangers, super easy. You know how to pray range, you should be fine. If not, I want to go see a doctor. On the trip, magic tile, as always, beginning. In, in this case, the magic tile is completely useless because of where they spawn, but it doesn't change anything. Anyways, they're two rangers, they're going to attack on the same tick. So it's basically like dealing with one ranger. It goes like this. I'm gonna lazy click though for the sake of being lazy. Smart work over hard work, you know what they say. By the way, guys, at this point in the guide, if you feel if you feel like you learned a thing or two, I would greatly appreciate if you considered, you know, hitting the like uh, button, the subscribe button, maybe dropping a little comment, help me with the algorithm. Um, it always helps a lot. For real, for real, for real, appreciate it. No pressure though, we're not done. So, uh, on 34 year, I like to change my quick prayer to, to mage and all that. It's gonna be a nibbler wave. I just gotta be ready to cast that freeze fast. Cause these guys are gonna gobble up your pillar. Otherwise, and next wave, we're gonna have the, ma the majors come and play. Now, I know it's not like necessary, but I start from 35 plus. I start here. A lot of people start at 50 uh, on this tile, but that's, that's just the way I've been doing it. And it works for me, so I'm closer to the magic tile and stuff in my head. That's all in my head, but but yeah. So majors, guys, once again on a four tick, on a four tick attack cycles. Uh, they have two cues for their for their first tick. So their first tick is when they flash, when they flash under, and there's also a, they have a sound. They go Pow! so let's let's uh, let's uh, check that out. Do you see? Pow! Like that's the one. Four. One, two, three, four, and also when the little round, the circle flashes under it. One, two, three, four. 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 Easy as pie. One. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Pray mage. Ice beerage. Now I'm just gonna stay here and pray range while uh, while this bat is coming up. Now an important mechanic I, I have to tell you about the majors. Okay, I'm actually gonna de demonstrate to you by killing not the major first. The major can respawn every single mob in the wave once. Uh, they respawn with 50% health. And they can only respawn things while they're attacking you. So right now, since it's not attacking me, it cannot respawn a mob. But it can respawn every single other mob in the wave with 50% health once only each. Uh, so that's about it. Well, let's see. Let's see if it does respawn the bat. Another thing is, if you're lazy flicking or you're doing any kind of flicking while it respawns something, just keep the cycle up. It's gonna be it's gonna come back on the same tick, it's gonna be fine. Don't panic, just keep the rhythm up, keep the cycle up, and you'll be fine. So in this case, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I'm gonna stop attacking so you can see it respawn. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three. Four, observe the animation. Two, three, four. Listen to the sound. Two, three, one, two. Okay, see? Four, one, two, three, four. Same cycle. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, eight. Voila. Now this bat, as you're gonna see, 
only has half of its HP, so 52 is going to be dead. And we keep going. So that's why most of the time you're going to try and kill the Major first in the wave. But it's not as important when you're just doing a casual run than when you're, for example, like speedrunning. So Magic Tile here. Why? Because that way my Major is next next to the bats and not behind the bats. It doesn't make a big difference in that case, but it still helps. Once again, we're going to go on our Nibbler Tile. That way these guys, if they start moving, uh, they're not going to drag us. Uh, they're not going to drag us uh, outside of the pillar where this guy can hit you for a lot. I think it's, I don't even know what his max hit is. Obviously, like, that's the kind of stuff I refer people to the wiki for. But you just don't want it to hit you as a rule of thumb, for real. You do not want that. Okay, when, when it dies, I'm gonna go in my bad safe spot so they don't hit me. Play for magic. Okay, I'm still gonna wait a little bit. I just want this guy to be like... Cool, like now I know it's not gonna be behind the major. Although I could have let it be behind the major so that um, so that I could have showed you how to flick the flick the blob and the major. But the fact that the matter is, guys, that I showed you how to flick it with the ranger earlier and it's the exact same thing. It is the exact same thing. So another thing you might have noticed is that I don't sweat my pillars. Like, I don't go too sweaty with my pillars because I know the techniques and all that. Obviously, it's different for everybody. Uh, but pillar anxiety is a thing. In my experience, uh, it's hard to a lot. A lot of people's planks in their early attempts is from chasing the nibblers too hard, or like trying to kill them at all costs. And a lot of times, that cost is their life. Uh, um. Magic start tile. Get the freeze ready. Now here, you see I'm good. I got that bat here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill the bat real quick. I don't really have to kill the bat actually. But I'm gonna kill it because I don't wanna step out and have to flick the blobs. I'm lazy, I hate flicking blobs. I'm gonna kill the bat. And then I'm gonna go in my, my nibbler safe spot here. And just casually, get very casually, uh, get, that, get that nib off. One, two, three, four. For those that are still learning how to lazy flick, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, is dead. Is dead. Well, zero prayer flicks. I've been using a lot more prayer than usual. <laughs> and I have prayer anxiety. Now, when it dies, a way to save a few precious prayer points is to wait for it to. Like, you can switch your gear before you activate your prayer. Uh, to kill these little guys. If ever, it's gonna save you a few precious points over time. Mage, he's ready. Okay, now magic tile again. Free range. Wait for this little bat. I'll try and kill the major first, so I'm gonna kill it from that side. Ah, sorry about that. I had a late night last night. Okay. Um here you can really deal with it as you wish. You could like flick the blob, kill the bats, whatever. I'm just gonna kill the blob. Uh here. The important thing though is that once it dies, is to step in the bad safe spot. So I'm gonna step in the bad safe spot right here. But it's the same thing. You just pray range. Just pray range and you kill. And I missed my flick. Right. I'm washed up. <laughs> I'm washed up, fam. 
Use a little blowpipe spray because once again, OCD. Want to be 99 HP at all costs. Okay, Rear Mage, he's ready. This guy, this guy saw me, so I'm on pre-range. This other guy saw me too. Okay, so I'm gonna go over there because I want to catch that last nibbler. Since I stepped out, since I stepped out pre-range, I know that guy was gonna attack me, Mage. How what I would do here is I would get into one tick flick. So. Don't care, guys, don't even think about the blob, okay? Just think about the, the major's attack cycle. So all that matters is one, two, three, four. The cycle starts on the one. So you switch to the ma the range prayer and start one take alternating on the one. Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now it attacks me range, so I'm gonna exit the I'm gonna exit the flick on range. Now another thing you definitely could have done on this wave here is go north of the pillar, kill this blob, uh, and then kill the major. But uh, I showed you an alternate a alternate little less obvious method for song. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here? Actually, no. I could. I could have just stayed there. I could have just stayed there. I could have went on that side here. Because once again, you can step out like up to three tiles uh, outside without the without the 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 milliard being able to reach you. I could have gone there. I would have been able to reach it all the way over there. But my reflex is just. Uh, I really like pulling the mobs closer to me. Now when this guy. Okay. Look. One thing you can do here. You remember when I told you how to off tick them by two ticks? Two, three, four, one, two. Oh fuck, as it dug. <laughs> I was a little too late. I'll do it now, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Zero prayer zero prayer flick. Two takes apart. Now it's awesome. You know it's not gonna dig again. Bust your balls. Always be one step ahead of the melee. They're literal worms. You should be smarter than them. Now I can chill, you know. I can, I can corner see spot this guy again in the end. Uh, now that wasn't necessary at all. It's really just a way to practice, like a cool way to practice uh, these uh, these uh, off ticks, because, like I said, it's the cheat code. It's the cheat code of all things. It's the cheat code. It's crazy. Especially also if you're doing the no dig, you know, if you're doing the no dig combat achievement, that method is very important. That way, you know what I mean. The, the melee is always attacking you, but always killing something else at the same time. Very important. Very useful. So I should say, <laughs> nothing's important in life. Yeah. Uh. So here, like, okay. So that's what I told you earlier. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna kill that bat. Just to show you. So another thing, you remember that that reverse lazy flick I, I told you about? That's good for the bats because you can't really one tick flick them. So you see, if I'm standing on that tile, I can reach my nibblers on that pillar without the melee being able to go around. So that's very useful. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna pray melee, and as soon as the melee hits me, I'm gonna go to that side because I don't want to kill the melee first because it's gonna get respawned. Which obviously, if you're learning, it really doesn't matter. But it's, it, once again, I guess it's a little OCD thing, and uh, if you eventually want to get into speedrunning and stuff like that... I know nothing about speedrunning, I'm absolute trash, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying like, this is the kind of manipulation that, that helps you save some, some precious... Uh, some precious time, because if, if, the, if the major respawns every mob in the wave, well that just makes your, your waves a lot, uh, a lot longer. You want to make sure the major goes down first, most of the time. I'm gonna go over there because once again I don't want to kill the melee first. 
But uh, otherwise, otherwise, I could have just literally corner safe spotted it for sure and uh, killed it. And it would it would have gotten respawn. It it wouldn't have been any worse than that. Now, since I know nothing's gonna get respawn, I can kill it from the south side of my pillar like that. I'm gonna use my specs because I doubt I'll be in a pickle on a regular infernal run, guys. <laughs> Imagine I plank like next wave. That'd be crazy. <laughs> okay. So here, I'm just gonna pray range, try to kill that bat as fast as possible before the melee gets here. When melee's in range, I'm gonna pray melee because it hits a lot harder. Um, there's a few things you could do here. You know what I would do if I was learning? I would just DPS the shit out of this guy uh, while using a rigor straight up. No shame. No shame. That's what I would do right here. Boom! So then you would tank a few bad hits. No problemo. You can reverse lazy flick, like I said. One, two, three. Or that way, like, at least it protects you from a few, a few bad attacks. Yeah. yeah, I've been using a lot of prayer. <laughs> I'm gonna have to chill. I'm gonna have to go like sweaty gamer mode for a few uh, for a few waves later. Now, on ja on on Zuck, you want to have four brews, four super restores. Ideally, if you're learning, it's not necessary. You're not necessarily gonna use all of them, but if you're learning, ideally, that's what you want to make it there with. I'm gonna take my time, heal on the little bat. 77 should be dead. Yeah. So, once again, pre mage. Freeze ready. Now I see this guy. I'm gonna go over there. That way I'm gonna be safe. I can just pre melee, go get my nibbler. Melee's gonna go around, but it's okay. Uh, a few things you can do here. As soon as it hits you, you can go there. That way you can try and kill the major first, or you could have just killed the melee first and uh, dealt with the respawn after that. When the melee digs, I can go back to the west side of the pillar where I was. Or you can do this if you want to make sure. Oh, wait, hold on. Look that up. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if you want to make sure that it doesn't dig again, uh, you, you could definitely do that. Off take them by two takes. Actual cheat code. If, once again, you're trying not to... Not trying to have the... Jalin caught digging for the combat achievement diary. Hello, I have dragon darts in that blowpipe. Dragix? Your mage, freeze ready. Okay. Magic tile again. I'm gonna try and catch a freeze on this guy. Oh, see, I caught it. Nice. That way I can, uh... That way I can, uh, you know. Okay, so what you could try to do here is try to catch a freeze on this guy. Because if you're trying to get your nibblers... Oh, see, I caught a freeze on this guy. I'm gonna pre mage just in case I step out too far for it to see me, but it shouldn't be a problem. So the reason why I caught a freeze on this guy was that that I could get, the, get them with without it going around the corner because if it went around the corner not only would it had it it had hit me uh the major would have too so so here you see how it dug oh, oh my god oh my god oh my god i fucked up there i fucked up there my bad i was i was talking and <laughs> i was talking and clicking at the same time the corner safe spotted it right against the blob oh, you see you see though you see though that major doesn't that may that major doesn't play around Hit me hard. Okay, so now we gotta think about our melee because it just respawn. If it respawns, I'm just gonna corner stay spotted, pray against the blob, and kill it again. Hello? Obviously, Tebow shreds. We're gonna kill that bat. 
Uh, I think this time around I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna heal on the on the melee because we're not speed running, we're chilling. We can lazy flick, so we're not using prayer. It sucks though. Healing on the milliers, that's definitely like your last resort. They got really good magic resistance and stuff like that. And obviously you're gonna burn a whole bunch of runes. But it's okay. I can afford it. I don't give a fuck. Okay, I'm starting to give a fuck actually. A damn. I wanna get demonetized on YouTube. I give a damn. <laughs> Uh, what you can do is uh, is uh, do that, but on the on the blob here. Once again, they 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 also they're also pretty trash to heal on, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do if you want to start uh, your ways with full HP. Uh, also, 47, 48 are kind of sweaty sometimes. On a pure 47 is awful because it's got two bats. Uh, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my 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 specs for for those days. I should be fine, but you should keep them. Pre mage, freeze ready. Magic tile here, you're gonna pre melee. I'm gonna wait for the, the stack to align. Once it aligns, I'm gonna go on my nibbler safe spot here. Get that last guy. Fuck, I keep lazy flicking my, my melee. Okay, nice. I'll be able to show you something uh, cool here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Okay, so now I want to kill my major first, right? And uh, sadly, there's no bad safe spots on this side. If you go here, the bat's gonna is gonna hit you or it's gonna come around. So what you're gonna do here? There's a little nifty little trick for that. Is you're gonna pray mage, okay? And then you're gonna click on this tile. You're gonna click right back. So you're gonna do this. Now you see the bat came around. This guy's still over there. If let's say you had a melee in the mix, you want to kill that bat. You step behind like that, kill the bat. Remember the melee days again before you killed it, you can go right over here. And it's good, it's safe. So that's another example of destacking. Uh very, very cool. I like like when I when I started learning these things too, figuring them out actually, because I figured all that shit about myself. For real, for real. And um it really helps. I really hope I'll be able to give you most destacking examples in these videos because some of them are really, really nice. And it really makes you feel like, just like, yeah. Infernal God vibes. Uh, now, you're going to want to kill these bats from the bat safe spot. So once again, any of the, any of the, the, the flicking or flinching method that you use are going to work. You could also, if you want to kill the, the bats, you could literally flinch it like, uh, like, like, like range like that, like range, step back. Free mage, but I know a little better than that, so I'm gonna go like this and zero prayer blob flick while I kill the bat. Because if I zero prayer blob flick, it allows me to do like actions, um, to, uh, like this in the empty, uh, in the empty ticks. So I'm gonna wait for this guy to be next to the corner, and once again, flick range, empty tick. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. That was a half cooked idea there. <laughs> okay, so next wave, 40, 48, is a double blob wave. Now, double blob waves, I tend to pre augury. Not anymore, but I used to pre augury on double blob waves. That way, you're sure to catch a. Once again, magic tile, you see? Magic tile, very important. Uh, that way, this guy doesn't hit me. And then I can wait for my stack to, to align. So, what I'm gonna do is pre mage. This guy's gonna attack me range. Pre range. This guy's gonna attack me mage. I know it sounds a little complicated, uh, but it's not that bad. You can just slow-mo this if you want. Uh, once you start understanding the blobs, it's going to become a little more clear. Now, I'm going to kill the, the milliard here if I can. If it digs, obviously, we corner safe spot. Pray against this blob instead. Now, if you want your peace of mind, you can kill this blob right, right next to me. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to instead get into a one-tick flick. So I want to step out praying mage. And then one tick later, so click, click, range, mage, range, mage. One, two, three, four. So the range, you click on range one tick after you clicked on a major. That's the important part. Let's break it down again. Hold on. Click, 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 click. I said click instead of a tick, but for the empty tick, but you know what I mean. 
If you use your eyes, you can see that I clicked one tick later. But there was an empty tick there. But once again, it's attacking me range, so I know I know I need to exit my flick on the range. On a range ting. When it respawns, you see how I didn't stop my cycle. The cycle is the same. So see, I'm gonna do range, click. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. Here, exit mage because it was attacking attacking me mage. Bring against this little guy. Alright, that was wave 48. That's one of the tough waves in the Inferno. Our spawn, you may think that was not, it wasn't a bad spawn, but the reason why it wasn't a bad spawn, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have been bad either way, but what made it better was the use of the magic tile. So starting, starting like 48, 46, 47, 48 up, magic tile becomes more and more increasingly important. Alright, your mage, ice barrage. So now here is just a major and two melee. So obviously I'm gonna have to step out the pillar to get this guy. Uh, I would like corner safe spot here to try and kill the major first. If ever the other the other melee is gonna dig first uh, before the one that attacked me because the one that attacked me it, it basically reset its uh, timer. There's still a chance they dig at the same time, but if they dig, I'm gonna go on my west side, re melee, deal with the melees, stuff like that. But there, there's a good chance that with Tebow I'll be able to take the the major down before that's a that's a fact but if you didn't have Thibault CD dog at the same time I'm just gonna go over there they're gonna be safe spotted and voila now guys this is where it gets interesting okay next wave is when you start having um both majors and, and rangers in the same wave so from that point on you're gonna start you're not gonna wear your mage top anymore at the beginning of the wave and you're gonna equip your crystal shield at the beginning okay because there's a very good chance that the, the ranger is going to hit you at the beginning of the wave. So that's why we do that. So from that point on. From that point on. Crystal shield on. Uh, Missouri body on at the beginning of the wave. And it should be gravy. Okay, I'm going to pre-mage. Of course, because it hits a lot harder. Now, the, the important part here in these waves is to really like just figure out where you can stand so that only one of them can hit you or none of them perfectly. So here I'm just going to get my guys from that side. We're going to be chill. We're going to be fine. And then I'm going to go get these guys like that. This guy won't be able to see me. That's actually a pretty, pretty easy solve. You know, I want to kill the major first. I'm going to kill the major first. Uh, but you know what was important there during that solve is the fact that I didn't chase my nibblers. The fact that I didn't go for my nibblers at all costs. Because if I went for my nibblers at all costs, that, that ranger would have gotten like 3-4 hits on me. So I took a second, I took a second, I positioned my wave, I stacked my mobs, and then I went for the pillar. That was the important, that, that was, uh, yeah. The takeaway here. All right, the game. Ready for next wave? Okay, so here you see. I'm gonna step on my magic top for a second. Now, what I'm gonna wanna do is go here. I can still pre-range because the bat's there in the way. I'm gonna kill this guy. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll kill the bat. I'll kill the bat real quick. That way I'm not gonna take zero hits and nothing. Now, the major's gonna come around, okay? But it's okay because I taught you how to off tick mobs by two takes. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Oh shit. Actually, actually, yeah, that wasn't, that didn't, it didn't work in that case. <laughs> hey, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. 
Nobody is, nobody is, nobody is. Uh, so straight up then, what I'll do is... Wait, okay. Now it's gonna work. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's it. Something was in the way earlier. The bat was in the way earlier, that's why. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That way we don't panic. Yo, we got, we got like 15 waves left. Your, pill your pillars can stand, st your pillars can stand tall. Still. So see what happened there is I didn't take my time enough. I was I was uh, too much in a hurry to step away from the pillar. Basically, I would have had to wait for the major to align itself like that. But instead, I stepped away, so it was able to see me, and its corner was there. So this guy couldn't go out on time and see me on the tick that I expected it to see me. So this is what happened there. If you want to run it back and see it, you'll see what happened, and you'll see that that explanation is correct. So 62 HP. I'm definitely gonna heal on this uh, on this guy. Take my time. Now, if you're really pressed for cash, you can always, like, take off your Missouri and shit like that, but, uh... Come on, man. <laughs> Who got time for that shit? I mean, peak heroes would definitely do it. Shout out to my peak heroes, man. I've been doing it lately, but... I wouldn't expect somebody learning to do it as much. Alright, Missouri body, crystal shield, pre mage, ice barrage at the ready. Okay, so see here, I'm going with Magic Tile pre-range. Switch my Virtus Rope Top since I know I'm praying against the right thing now. And I'm going to wait for this guy to be at least past the point where he can hit me. Because if you go on your Nibbler Safe Spot Tile uh, and you're too early, then the Major is probably going to be able to see you. Like, mobs over there are going to be able to see you, and that's that's a problem. I want to kill the Major first, so as soon as Ranger attacks, we step here, switch to Mage, kill the Major. Once again, the magic tile is super clutch here because otherwise, if I hadn't used my magic tile, I probably would have to dealt with a bat uh, on top of the major because it would have stacked like one behind another instead of one next to one another. But another great example of the magic tile working its magic. But now, when this major dies, I'm gonna go in the bat safe spot and I'll just lazy flick the ranger while I kill the bats. I could just spray range against the bats, they would drain your stamina, it's a little annoying, and also my OCD. So lazy flick, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Friendly reminder, the ticks start when the little bar is on the left. So one, two, three, four. One, two, four, four. Four. I think you get it by now. Yay! Ready? You know the drilly. Okay, so here, if I go here, I know I'm safe. I know I'm safe. I know that guy was like being held by the corner there. I'm just gonna kill my major. Super chill. Super chill. Hey, uh, I'm gonna kill the blob first because, like I said, I do prefer healing on the ranger at the end since you're 100% protected. Protected. Step on the magic tile quick. Step on the magic tile quickly. And once again, if I want to kill it, I step I step north instead of stepping west. That way, I could corner safe spot again just by doing that. It is not useful in this case because everybody else is dead. But it is important to keep up good habits. Because bad habits are hard to break. And this is why you're watching this video right now, so you never even have bad habits to begin with. Yay. Mage. Ice Beerage. Okay, see here? I just want to step over there. Now, I want to kill my bat as fast as possible, and I'm going to start one tick flicking. Once again, you only look, you only look at the, the ranger. You don't care about the blob. The blob might hit you once. But it's not gonna hit you twice if you if you uh, if you want to flick. Now, 
There's a lot of things I could do here. I could kill, I could kill the, the ranger while one tick flicking. That's what I would do as a beginner, okay? I would definitely do that. But instead, what I'm gonna do, because I'm an absolute Chad, and you can be too, is on the one tick, on the one of his attack cycle, I'm gonna get my ranger and my major two ticks apart, and I'm gonna kill the major first, okay? So two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then zero prayer. Zero prayer if you wanna take it even further. Step it up a notch. That's it. Inferno is easy, guys. It's literally too easy. Now, another example of the magic tile being magic. So you see this guy, I can't really reach it. I would have to step out of the pillar, right? But... If it's north of the pillar, if it's south of the pillar like that, if I step on my magic tile, it's gonna come over to a point where either your blood spells or your Tebow is gonna be able to reach it, or your long range weapon basically is gonna be able to reach it without you having to step out um, of the pillar. So I can just, you know, take my time, lazy flick, maybe catch up on my text messages while I do this. Everybody good? Everybody good? Okay. Now, kill the method. Uh, kill the blob using the method of your choice. The joys of the inferno. Once again, I switched my gear and I clicked on the mob before turning on my prayer. That saved me like... That might have saved me a prayer point, honestly. Maybe a whole prayer point. And you have limited amounts of those. Okay, easy. Magic tile once again so that guy doesn't see me. And I'll try to catch a freeze on this guy. Damn, yo, Virch is fucking for real. Virch has been fucking. Okay, so now I'm just gonna finish it. I'm just gonna finish the bat so it doesn't get to me. Kill this guy. <coughs> Now, okay, for example, for exa if I had a melee, for example, in that wave, okay, you know what I could do here? What I could do here is while I wait for it to dig, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, so that way when it digs, I can just corner safe spot it, you know what I mean? But that's what I mean when I say you always gotta think ahead of the melees. So instead of like tripping out and wondering if it's on the same tick or whatever the fuck over there, you just put yourself in a situation where as soon as it digs, you can just safe spot it. It is not necessary, but once again, you know what I mean? The, 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 it helps a lot. It helps a lot. I feel like J-Rock, I'm saying you know what I mean a lot. You know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? <laughs> 80, 90 times, that's too many. That's too many know what I'm saying. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah, did I mean... Uh, once again, do do as you please. Wave 56, next wave is another double blob wave. One of those waves where it's important to know how to uh, one tick flick. And also one of the ways where you can play augury at the beginning of the wave. Just to, just to, just to have that little extra chance at, uh, at freezing your nibs uh, without you tripping out about it, you know, so that you don't have to... You don't have that on your mind while you deal with the rest. Okay, so I'm gonna pray augury for the sake of a uh, demonstration. Super easy here. I'm gonna go on my magic tile. Actually pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna pray against this guy. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go down a few tiles and I'll get into a one tick flick while I go get my nibbler, okay? So I click. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now I know this guy was attacking me mage, that's why I broke the cycle on mage. And now there's something cool that I'll be able to show you guys here. I'm gonna get into one tick flip with these guys. Yeah, sorry, that was a hectic. I'll be able to show you a very nice D stack that I, that's like one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I'm just gonna kill that blob.
Okay. Now, you see how if I kill the Major over here, I would have to flick the Major in the blob, right? But let me show you something nice. So what I'm gonna do here, okay, is I'm gonna pray a range against the Ranger, and I'm gonna do this. And flinch it, and look at my blob. You see my blob now? You see where it is? Nowhere to be found on the east side. Nowhere to be found on the east side of the pillar, that's for sure. That's for sure. So that's another great example of destacking. Uh, it's on that tile here. It's one of the tiles you have marked for Zuck anyways, so. Oh. This one. This one I can't do nothing about, though. <laughs> this one I can do nothing about, so I guess we're gonna have to one-tick flick in the end. But there was hope. There was hope there for a second. I mean, you could also, like... If, you're, if you don't want to learn how to flick at all, you could brute force killing the blob there and uh, go back to the method I just showed you. Uh, go back to not having to, to want to flick because... Okay. Uh, I guess I could do... Oh yeah, no, he's gonna do it by itself. He's gonna do it by itself. So I'm gonna kill the, I'm gonna kill the ranger first. So here I just keep I just keep flicking uh praying against the blob in the back. They hit a little harder than these little guys, so always prioritize the blob. Uh, I'm gonna use my magic towel here once again. Look at that. It's gonna be too easy. My nibbler's over there. Okay, it's a little sweaty. My pillar's starting to be low, but you don't want to die. You don't want to die for it. I go like this. See, my major is just gonna block the ranger. I can just go like this. Get the last guy. Love the magic tile. I'm gonna kill the melee because I'm not speedrunning in a CBA like as you should. As you should. Okay, we're gonna go here. That way I'm safe. Okay, now we're, we're gonna use my... my uh, that's a perfect example, see? So on the one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then if the melee digs, I'll just be able to corner safe spot it. And I'll be able to keep uh, keep killing the major, so it dies first. So it dig is digging here. I want to make sure I don't break my my cycle. Uh, that was definitely not the beginner thing to do, but uh, it works very well. It's not that hard to learn. I'm telling you. Slow down the video. Look at it, and uh, you got this. I I believe in you. Okay, so here, I don't want it to dig, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get them two ticks apart. Oh, I dug anyways, but whatever. I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna go right here, kill the bat. Oh, 
Remember save spot. Then I'm just gonna go over there because I don't like stepping on my pillar too much. Although I would have been a hundred percent safe. Okay, so once again, I want to make sure that only the major arranger can hit me. I'm gonna take care of those bats by using that reverse lazy flicking right there I showed you. Okay, and then what you can do here? Try catch a freeze on this guy. Okay, didn't give it to me. I'm pretty angry. Try another time. Okay, doesn't work. Maybe one more time. Oh shit. Okay, wait. Another thing you can do is it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That was a little sloppy for real. Here, just let your pillar go too. But now we're here. So look at the melee's attack cycle. Basically, I'm only praying mage on the tick that I need to pray mage. So I wouldn't even need to know actually what, what tick the melee is attacking me on, you know what I mean? Because as soon as, as long as I'm protected during the, the mage hit, that's fine. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, I definitely would have let my pillar go though in that case. If I was you guys, I would have tried like DPSing it as fast as I can. I would have prayed mage and I would I would have prayed mage and rigor and I would have killed the melee as fast as possible instead of trying to freeze it. It would have had the same result, more or less. And you wouldn't have to do that super, like, sweaty flick. Obviously, you gotta take into consideration, consideration there's always a bunch of ways uh, to solve every waves. I wish I could do them all at the same time, but I can only explain with words. And those I cannot de de demonstrate with actions. So, guys, waves 60 up, that's where it gets really sweaty. Uh, you pray augury. At the beginning of these waves because uh that's the hard waves man so here i'm gonna get into a i'm gonna get into a one tick flick like that and then i'll just go down the tile because this guy obviously could hit me i got a corner safe spot now one two three four if you want to play augury honestly uh probably not augury but like rigor here you could but we're cool we're cool we got this I'm gonna go there, pre mage, kill the mage. That's it, that's gravy. Now, there's a lot of things I would love to show you there. Okay, let me show you something cool actually. Let me kill the Jalim Cot, because it can't be it can't be resurrected twice. I'm gonna kill it now and I wanna show you something cool. So I taught you how to off-tick the, the rangers and majors or any mobs in four attack, uh, four tick attack cycles by two. But let me show you how to off-tick them by one because if, for example, you got a blob in the mix, you want to be able to one tick flick the whole thing, right? So you want them one tick apart. So instead of stepping on the first tick, you're going to step out on the second tick. So it goes one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And then I can flick all of them together. So if you want them one tick apart, you step out on the second tick of the mob's attack cycle. Uh, so that was it that's another really useful one really really useful one obviously that was completely useless here but in other situations in other situations uh it, it might just be cool um little ranger here oh wait hold on it's only really cool i want to show you too that's like my favorite save that used to be my favorite save spot so i remember when i learned that i was like oh that's so cool so if you got if you got two mobs stacked on the west side of the pillar okay what you want to do is you want to pray against the one in the back okay so in this case i'm gonna pray against the blob you want to start on this tile right here and then look what i can do i can just click here and then you see the ranger's corner stay spotted and you can do that with any mob you can do that with any mob on the on that side basically you pray against the one in the back and uh, you use that little uh, that little uh, safe spot there to get the job done. Obviously, the other method 
The other method in this case to, to like one to click would have been way better because um you know I hit this guy? Yeah, okay. Uh because as you can tell, like I got I got hit a bunch of times um from the little blob spawns, but if it had been like a major in the back, I could have just prayed mage. Uh that's pretty much the only way to deal with a, a stack. If if you have like a ranger major, it's that's pretty much the only way to deal uh with us with that stack, and it's pretty useful. And I like it, it's just really cool. <laughs> Step back. Nice, I really got to show you like most of the stuff I went to show you guys, for real. Okay, protect from magic, augury. Yeah, that freeze. Okay, now here's gonna be a little sweaty. Actually, no, that's, that was a bad decision. Okay. That was a bad decision on my part at the beginning of the wave. I'm gonna let my pillar go because it's going anyways, okay? So what I want to do here, okay? I'm gonna go over there. And I'm gonna start killing my melee. One, two, three, four. That way if it digs, I'll be able to just corner safe spot. I'll be able to safe spot. Not corner safe spot. I just safe spotted. Um, on the, on the west side. Now like I said, guys. Like, you're gonna get hit a few times by the blobs. Uh, because... Like, sometimes you can't really pay attention to everything at once. And, uh, but as soon as, as long as you're protected against the, the major and that you know that your one tick uh, flick is uh, in line with the major, don't give up. Just keep flicking. Just keep flicking. Keep flicking. And, uh, and yeah, you're most likely going to survive. And if you don't, well, that's that's an RNG issue for real. That's, that's, the, that's a curse. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of ways to deal with that. I can think of a few others, like now that I'm looking back at the wave in my head. But that'll be a story for another time. Super easy, magic tile. We're gonna pray against that blob real quick. Wait for our stacks to align. What the fuck is this? I'm going over there. Break against the, the, the ranger. Pretty easy. I'm gonna kill the, the melee because fuck it. Like that's that's we pray against the ranger, we kill the me uh, we kill the melee. I uh, that's a major, I'm in melee. Now if I want to make sure it doesn't it doesn't uh, dig, once again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, no prayer to use, none of that shit. You know what to expect. Uh I'm gonna kill the bats. Cause we ain't, we just gotta pray range. And then if I was if I was a learner, I would definitely go over there and kill the blob. But what you could do here is just like that and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when it step when it step back like that though, that's why that's why I wouldn't have done that as a learner, you know, because it's gonna respawn everything else. So I'm, just, I'm just gonna do what I would have done if you were learning uh, and it's going there corner safe spot mage now this guy I'm, I'm just gonna pray mage right now but I want to corner safe spot my major again just cuz uh, if it respawns the melee then I'll be able to just re-corner safe spot it and uh it's gonna be super chill so we step north instead of stepping west as per usual loves that shit we don't care about that and don't care about all that uh let's just now I wouldn't have used my uh, wait. I, I, I wouldn't have used my blowpipe spec here because I definitely would want to keep it for 63, which is arguably the hardest wave in the inferno. Uh, but it's not a problem for me, obviously. So. Be cool. But yeah, definitely. Even if you want to wait for your spec, you know, at, at that wave, like you can just like court, like safe spot one of the mobs and wait for your spec. That's always useful to have both of them, uh, both your blowpipe specs to. Get yourself out of a pickle if needed. All 
All right. Your mage, your augury, don't forget. Okay. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna kill it. Two, three, four. So. Damn. That's hard to explain this one, for real. That's really hard to explain, but often you have a melee that spawns like that. And it's always gonna attack you, like, on the fourth tick of the wave. I don't know how to explain. Like, you'll always be able- if it spawns like that, you'll always be able to, to, to do it. So, here, you see, it respawned the, the melee already. That's kind of a pain in the ass. There's a lot of things I could do, but I'm gonna show you the really actual proper thing to do is use that trick that I showed you. And step out on the second tick. One, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. So that way, I can just kill it. That was the proper thing to do. Otherwise, that was a shit spawn, honestly. If you're learning, that spawn is horrible. <laughs> but you see, I use my magic tile. And, um... I should go back, like, I should clip that and go back on that, that specific spawn when there's a, a melee that spawns, like, northeast of your pillar like that, because it's always the same. Uh, but it's it's hard to just, like, explain like that. So I know it's attacking me mage, so I'm gonna... Go over here, switch like that. My mom was calling me. Damn, not me ghosting my mom. <laughs> Ah, uh, mom. Be nice to your mom, for real. Okay. Using my f using my famous reverse lazy flick here because once again the low blobs they're on a three tick attack cycle so you can't really just like one tick alternate them uh, with these guys guys we made it through the worst wave in the inferno but it's not over for real you can definitely get fucked over on 64 and even worse on 65 hopefully the the 65 thing's not gonna happen because for real even I have a hard time with it so we're just gonna hope that we don't have to do a Z solve because it just sucks. And I, I, I know I can definitely pull it off, but I would have to go back and look at the look at the GIF to refresh my memory. I don't remember it like that. But if you use a magic tile, honestly, there's very, very low chances of that happening. First, we're going to focus on 64. Once again, same thing. You're ready. Ray made. Ray augury. Magic tile. That's gonna be cool. At that point, guys, you, you don't give a fuck about that pillar. You don't need that pillar no more. You officially do not need that pillar no more. Are we good? I'm still, because I'm low CD, I'm gonna kill these guys, but you really don't need to. But yeah, let go of your pillars, man. I mean, unless you're trying to get that combat achievement diary, of course. But that's on you. If you're trying to get combat achievement diaries at that point, I assume that you would know what to do there. Um, or that you would just get a different spawn. A, a different, easier spawn to deal with on another attempt, for real. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm kill the, slowly kill the, the melees. Since I got him to uh, corner state spotted. And when they dig, I'm gonna go back on the west side to finish off my major. Here, kill all that major. We'll respawn. Good. Now next wave is two rangers. I'll see you look. See? We were calm, we stayed calm, our pillar's still standing, you can still save it. If you were dead, you couldn't save it. Fact. That's a fact of life. Easy, easy spawn, guys. Easy spawn. So, I'm just gonna go here to make to make sure that it comes a little closer to me. And then, et voila! Okay. 
You basically sold the Infernal, guys. That's it. After that, we got Jazz and Zuck. That's the fun part. Once again, see, I was patient. I'm still able to save my pillar. Hey, by the way, shout out to everybody that might be watching right now. I know I haven't been reading the chat or anything. I don't even know how many, like, I know, I know nothing of what's going on in the stream right now. I assume my mods are doing their job, although I don't feel like they have any reason to do their jobs. Uh, but I hope that's what, that was uh, educated. We're not done, obviously. Yeah, shout, shout out to Chow Gang, baby! Chow Gang, best gang! We out here, for real, for real. <laughs> so, 66, guys. Two majors. Uh, if you're not a free mage, you'll be fine. It's the little button right here. Whatever you know. And uh, yeah, it's pretty gravy. That went well. That was nice. Well, it is. So, here, obviously, you can wear your virtuous robes because you're going to be praying mage, nothing can hit you. And what I like to do is give myself a little bit of time between Wave 66 and Jads and Zuck. So I do hit the logout button uh, at the beginning of the wave. What it does when you hit the logout button in the Inferno is that at the end of the wave, it's going to pause the Inferno until you're ready to resume the Inferno. Now, if you don't want to, because the meters can respawn each other. They can only do it once, but if you don't want to have to deal with several respawns, especially if you're, you know, low on supplies, or you're afraid to, to one tick flake. What you want to do is you want to get the majors as close to like zero HP as so you see, that's pretty good. It's got like 19 HP left. I'm gonna get the other one pretty close too. And after that, you're trying to kill them like almost at the same time. And something that's really important, guys, is you need to be one tile away from the pillars at least at the end of by the time the 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 majors are dead because the pillars do collapse at the end and uh, they deal damage and uh, it just sucks. You know when you get hit, you can actually die from it. And uh, if, if you don't die, you're just going to waste a bunch of supplies on that, so... So that's lame! But you made it. You made it. You worked so hard. You've been attempting this for weeks. Maybe less than weeks because you watched my guide first. Or my guides, plural. Uh, if you want more examples, of course, I got other Infernal guides that are also going to be linked in the description. Um, so here you are on Jazz and Zog. Now, if, you, uh, if you're doing the Infernal, I assume that you've gotten the Fire Cape before. Uh, so the first jet is pretty much the same. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I will show you how to um, how to uh, flick it so that you don't lose any prayer, uh, more or less, that you lose less prayer if you want that. And I will teach you how to run under uh, to safe spot the minions and not have to deal with them. Uh, but other than that, it's Jad. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I do like to rearrange my uh, my my inventory at that point. Uh, for some reason i do keep my bruise on the left and my super restores on the right there's no logical reasons why you're not gonna need your blowpipe uh because we're gonna use, be using tebow uh, obviously if your if blowpipe is your best in slot like i don't think actually if you got if you've got like an acb or something like that it's gonna be better on uh it's gonna be better on jads so um uh, yeah, that about sums it up obviously you want your sound up for this and uh let's do this those are the tiles uh you want to start on that tile basically it's going to spawn like right next i'm going to be like one tile away from it and this is the tile for the triple jads uh on the wave after that so uh, pretty straightforward once again at that point i do set up my quick prayer uh, to redemption and rigor because you're going to want that on zuck and i I'm, I'm like adhd as fuck and i tend to forget all the time so when i get to jad i change it right away that way it's not a problem later on i do not use a sip of a, ba uh, a sip of bastion on regular jad because it's easy as hell <sighs> but i will on triples so that being said wish me luck if you want to resume the inferno after uh logging out and during a wave all you gotta do is either log out log back in or simply hop worlds like i am about to do i'm gonna try and find a good world uh sorry fight pit how appropriate Once again, hit the logout button so you get a little bit of breathing room between both waves. Get ready. 
Now, when Chad does, does this mage attack, as soon as you see the fireball, you can turn off your prayer. Fireball, turn off prayer. You don't have to, I'm just saying. If you want to say range attack, as soon as you hear the sound, the ksh, you can turn off your prayer. Fireball, turn off prayer. Sound, turn off prayer. Turn off prayer. Fireball, turn off prayer. Obviously, you could be counting ticks too. Uh, we're not gonna do that. So, take your time, guys. Take your time tagging the healers. Now, I could be tagging them with blood spells because I'm pretty, you know, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. I'm gonna do that now. Once you tag them, instead of turning off your prayer, you're gonna switch to melee, okay? Now, you wanna align them in a in a in a in a way that they're they're kind of like on one or two rows. And now, as soon as it attacks, I'm gonna switch over. Bring against it and then switch back to melee like that and boom after that you got no you got nothing on you you can take your time heal on the heal on the um, the healer heal on the healer is how ironic it's our turn to heal and that's it rinse and repeat i'm good you hear the sound you turn off your prayer For deaf people, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how you're watching this guy even. Oh, well, with the subtitles, I guess. Got all my deaf people out here. I remember when I was a kid, one of my neighbors was deaf. You know, like, he was a little older than me, but still, we played, we, like, we played together a lot. I wonder what he's up to right now. Technology came super far, too. Like maybe he's not even deaf anymore. Hey yo! So you made it through Jad. Um uh, now it's time to do that with three of them. Now the fact of the matter is that three Jads is basically just one faster Jad, right? Um I really, really recommend focusing on on your prayer switches. Always, first and foremost. First and foremost, yeah, that's the expression, right? You can say that. Uh, always focus on switching your prayers and tag the healers one by one with the Tebow. Do not be a hero for real, for real. One by one, not in a hurry. I will show you how to kind of safe spot the healers a little bit if you got more than one on them, so that only one of them can hit you. Uh, it's it's really easy. Just pay attention. I will call it out. And uh, here before the wave, I do uh, drink a brew, take a sip of super restore. And uh, then you got your Divine Bastion. I pop the Divine Bastion when I hop because uh, that way you get the most out of it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am turning into j Rock. but what the fuck? Okay, so let's go. Wish me luck. Hit the logout button, don't forget. Free rigor. And don't forget your Bastion Potion also. Your Divine Bastion. Okay, now. I am gonna flick them, but I wouldn't flick them if I was learning, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to, plus I still got a million supplies, like, I could do like a whole run with the supplies I got left almost. It's just like force a habit for me. So, like I said, here, see, see why, the reason why you start on that tally is because a lot of times, one of them is gonna be safe spotted like that. So that's actually a really good spawn for the healers because uh, they literally, none of them is hitting me right now. I got one of them safe spotted, so I got lucky on that. Maybe I'll be a little less lucky with the other spawns. We'll see. But that was a lucky spot. So you can you can literally do triples with no prayer. Uh, 
Okay, so here I'm gonna have two hitting me. I'll be able to show you guys what I meant. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I got lucky, actually, but wait. I'll show you guys for the sake for the sake of science. You see, now I got two hitting me. So if you got two hitting you like that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna step towards the middle. And boom. One of them is corner safe spotted now. It's as easy as that. That's all you gotta do. Oh, wait. This one's still healing. I thought I had tagged it. I was too I was too excited to show you guys how to I'm afraid I'm afraid rigor here. Now normally if I if I really wanted to do like like almost no prayer, I would like I would drag this healer around the corner and I would do the little run under trick that I just did on the wave before that. We're cool. I ain't trying to flex or nothing. We're just trying to get our first escape right now, possibly. Sip. Give my supplies. <laughs> this could be you. Now I'm not brewing. You could brew, obviously, if you were, you know, like, like I say, you need four. You need four for Zog, so you can definitely brew. Me, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna heal all my healers uh, after tagging them and stuff. Uh, but if you if you wanted to, you could definitely brew there. Oh, completely useless blood barrage. So now I'm gonna flick melee instead of turning off my prayer here. But you don't have to. You can definitely just tank them until you have them here. Then once you have them here, as soon as it attacks, flick on the other side, and then boom, pray melee. After that. But click on the other side, pray against the attack, and then pray melee. Now here, definitely you might want to take off your Missouri if you're healing. Because these guys got magic resist for days sometimes. It's pretty much free, we pretty much solved the wave. So once again, mage, fireball, you turn off. Range. When you hear the sound, you turn off. Et voila, my friends! You're almost there. You're almost there. You made it so far. You should be proud of yourself. First, you're going to pat yourself on the back a little bit. You're like, God damn. That's already one of the hardest things in RuneScape. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's the last part. It is freaking... Zuck time. Don't forget to drink your water. Don't forget to... Get this. Uh, just forget to stretch a little bit. Like that. Um, okay, so, Zuck is, uh, <laughs> Zuck is a lot of theory, Zuck is a lot of theory, for really, if you want, okay guys, if you're a visual learner, I recommend Exact Guide for Zuck, because he really, like, he did all the edit, you know what I mean, and he put, like, everything, like, blah, 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 if you're a visual, like, theoretical learner, if you're a visual learner, I would definitely watch this right now, I mean, I would do both, either way, 
But yeah, if you like like no like having like the shit laid out like in a diagram type shit or whatever, his is great. I'm not gonna knock that for sure for sure. Shout the homie. And uh, but I'm gonna I'm still gonna run you through what I know as best as I can at the best of my ability. Um, so here goes. Uh, wait, I don't even know how to go about that. So basically, Zuck has like 1200 HP. Uh, there's a set comprised of a ranger and a major that's gonna spawn. Okay, let me start. Over. Let me start over. Let me start over. So at the beginning of the fight, okay, there's a shield. That shield gonna go either left or right okay right away if it goes left or right you're gonna go to the furthest safe spots those are the zuck safe spots okay those tiles here that are marked those are the tiles where you're gonna be able to to hide from zuck's attack behind that shield so as soon as you see if it goes left or right right away you click on that on that further on the on that end spot that safe spot now after that the shield is gonna go back and forth like that once it does one back and forth there's a set that's going to spawn. The set is going to is comprised of a major and a ranger. The major is always on the left. The ranger is always on the right. Um, you got to attack these sets. You got to attack these sets. Uh, because if you don't attack them, they're going to attack your shield. And eventually your shield's HP is going to run out. And if your shield's HP runs out, you're dead. Pretty much. Because you cannot take eat Zuck. You, you can tank Zuck like once or twice maybe. But ain't no way you're gonna tank it like 40 times in a row. If you if that ever happened to you, please send me the video. I would love to see that. Um, so those sets, they're gonna spawn every three minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. But the timer pauses when Zuck hits below 600 HP. So at 599 HP, the timer is paused. Okay. So let's say uh the set spawns and it takes you like like two minutes right to get zug below 600 hp well then that means that after that when the timer resumes at 480 hp you're gonna have the amount of time you had left plus a minute 45 that is added to the timer but if you do not get zug below 600 hp then every three minutes and 30 seconds there's another set that's gonna spawn okay um I feel like for that video, I'm gonna show you how to how to flick the sets because honestly, it's really dope. It's really satisfying. I would definitely not recommend the learner do that though. What you would do in that case, if you were to deal with the uh, with the sets uh, without knowing how to flick them, is you would pre range. Uh, no, my bad. You would pre mage, and you would try to kill the ranger as fast as possible, and just pre you get some good RNG, and it doesn't max hit you like crazy. This is your best. This is your best case. Uh, obviously, when, when you're on the left here and you can't attack the ranger, you're going to be wanting to wear your crystal shield uh, until the ranger is dead. Uh, but that is your best shot. Now, if you're not flicking the sets, once the ranger is dead, you want to take your attention back on Zuck to try and get it down to below 600 HP as fast as possible. Uh, so that the sets are eventually paused and then you can move on to the next phase of the combat which is jad jad spawns below 480 hp once jad spawns once again you're gonna have the amount of time that you had left on the three minutes and 30 before you paused plus a minute 45 until another set spawns that means if you take too much time killing jad there's another set that's gonna spawn at the same time as jad and uh it is possible to deal with that shit but uh, for a learner, I doubt. I, I mean, that's, that'll be a stretch, right? I would definitely not uh, expect that from any one of you guys. So, uh, so that's about it. Now, after you kill Jad, there's an, the next phase of the combat happens below 240 HP. So at 240 HP, Zuck um, enters his Enrage phase, uh, during which he's going to attack, like, is it twice more often? Anyways, he's going to attack more often. And... You're gonna have to keep up with the shield instead of being able to go from one safe spot to another uh, and just be able to wait for the shield and know that if you're in that safe spot, you're gonna be safe. You're gonna have to keep up with the shield. So just pay attention. I'm gonna try obviously to verbalize all of that during the fight. But uh, as you might have seen in my other guys, sometimes when I do that, I plank. So anyways, I'll try and see the fight through. So at 240 and rage phase, Zuck is gonna spawn some Jalax. Uh, there's... Four of them? Is it four of them or six of them? Fuck. 
There were four or six of them. I. There's four of them. No, wait, what? I've done this 475 times. There's four of them. I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, that's crazy. We're gonna find out together, I guess. Uh, <laughs> muscle memory is a crazy thing. Let me tell you. So uh, during that phase, you're gonna want to pray redemption. You're going to want to pray redemption because uh, you're going to want to pray redemption, but you don't want to rely on your redemption 100%. Because let's say you got 11 HP, two healers can hit you at the same time, you're still going to die through your redemption. Uh, but you're going to want to have that as a as a safe keep. Uh, you need to tag the healers ASAP so that they stop healing Zuck, and after that, you need to kill them. Uh, there's a thing called the blowpipe walk, which basically consists of like uh moving like moving two tiles attacking moving two tiles attacking moving two tiles attacking pay attention to that while i do it and um other than that that's about it if you're learning you're gonna want to wait for another basically after jad you're gonna want to get zuck to as close as you can to 240 hp without proccing the the healer phase uh and then you're gonna want to wait for a set because the sets can spawn during the healer phase. And trust me, that is stressful as hell. Uh, so you're going to want to wait for another set. Kill that set. You, you have two choices. If you don't want to pray redemption, because honestly, redemption is really like a safety net. If you don't want to pray redemption and give yourself more time during the, the healer phase uh, before another set spawns, you're, you don't have to kill the major. That way, you, it, it, it adds the time that you would have taken to kill the major to uh, the amount of time that it takes before another set spawns. So you can just keep pray mage. And keep killing the healers and uh, after the healers are down then you can kill your major uh and uh and start killing zuck again until the next set spawns but the important is that the set doesn't spawn during the healer phase so off the top of my head like that that is uh, all the knowledge i can just like blurt out uh so once again uh first back and forth of the shield first set spawns you got three minutes and 30 until another set spawns when zuck hits below 600 hp the timer is paused with whatever time is left out of the 3 minute 30. Uh, so then you, that's like you're free. That's like you, you get to do whatever the fuck you want. Like you heal up, you do all that stuff. And, um, uh, wow. X to ADHD moment. I don't even remember what I was saying. Yeah, okay. After that, a 480 HP. Whatever is left of your 3 minute 30 timer, a minute 45 gets added to that. And a Jad spawns. So you need to kill Jad as, as fast as possible. Another thing I have to say, because I do want this guy to be valid for all gear. So I'm going to assume that you're not going to do this with a rune crossbow, though, because that's a little different. But if you're doing this with an armadillo crossbow, you cannot hit. You need, to, you need to be on long range to hit Jad from this corner. You need to be on long range if you're using an armadillo crossbow to hit Jad from this corner. This is not the case with Bofa. This is not the case with Tebow. You can be on rapid the whole time. But for Jad specifically... On the mage side, if you're using an Armadillo Crossbow, you need to switch to long range, which is a big reason why there's a lot sweatier uh, using Armadillo Crossbow is the switch. Like when you're not used to it, you know, it's a it's a one more thing to think about. And sometimes you gotta like pray switch. It's a, it's it gets sweaty. Um I do like to rearrange my inventory one more time. You want to keep your blowpipe closed. You're not gonna need your code I wand or your virtue stop at all. At all, at all, at all. You're gonna use a blood spell to tag the the jad healers but you're going to use it manually because you don't want to lose it the tick that it would take you to to tag it with the code I, because when you auto cast it takes an extra tick to uh, to cast the the spell now i really think that that being said i went through everything and there is some things that there are some things i'm going to add during the combat but not too many things one of them being like when you can move uh to the next safe spot uh, on both the regular phases and the enraged phase and i will teach you how to uh to uh, how to tag the sets with blowpipe actually i could go over that right now a little bit to tag the sets for them to be two ticks apart using the blowpipe you need to attack the second mob on the second tick of the first mob's attack cycle so you remember the attack cycles the one two three four so with your blowpipe on the second tick of the first mob's attack cycle you're gonna hit the second mob and then they're gonna be two ticks apart okay that's the method i'm gonna be doing today uh, obviously it's different depending on the weapon i don't remember them all by heart uh but i do know that for blowpipe which you're most likely gonna have if you're doing this 
it is on the second tick of the first mob's attack cycle. Uh, now, now, we good for real? I'm about to go in. Two, 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 baby. Chugging best gang. Let's go. Wish me luck. Make sure my. Okay. Like repairs are set up. We good. So, there's a little trick I'm about to show you to get an extra hit in uh, on Zuck at the beginning. So, pay attention. I'm going to do it right now. The first thing I'm going to do. Yeah. Oh, let's get this shit done. Okay. So, two things you want to do at the beginning of the wave. There's a little cutscene that's going to proc every time. So it doesn't matter. You can be standing at the other side of the, of the thing. So I was going to put you at the right place. You're going to pray. You're going to sip your Divine Bastion. Pray Ringer. And then check this out. Check this out. Check this out. During the cutscene. You can right click Zuck like that. So that way as soon as the cutscene is over. I just click. And then boom. Okay. It's going right. So I'm going right. So now. To know when you can go to the next safe spot. Look at the movement. It moves its leg. You can go to the next safe spot. Moves its leg, you can go to the next safe spot. This one kind of it's kind of like a half safe spot. Moves its legs, you go to the next safe spot. Leg moved. Okay, now switch your blowpipe if it, if it spawns on a range side. I tag it, go back to my table for one attack, go back to my bull pipe. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now they're two ticks apart. So I can do this. Now what this does, since I'm going to be flicking them, is I'm going to be able to focus my DPS on Zuck, which greatly decreases the chance of spawning an extra set. Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, 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 four, one. Okay, it's below 600 HP. Wait, this guy with a blow pipe here. So now I have time. I have time, all the time in the world to kill my sets. From here, guys, from that safe spot, you can't hit. You cannot hit the major with the blow pipe. So be careful with that. One. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three. Okay, now the ranger is dead, so I can focus on killing my major. Oh, uh, wait, no, sorry, I gotta kill this guy first. <laughs> I gotta kill this guy first. Now, here, I would set like a, a sip of stamina potion. And now, our next phase of combat is gonna be when Zuck is at 480 HP. Jazz is gonna spawn right now. So, I turn my camera around when I do it. So I kind of move like when the shield is behind you, you move. And we don't have to look at Zuck like that. You can, you can, I'm flicking it. You, you wouldn't be flicking it normally. If you're learning, for sure. Okay, so now the healers are going to spawn. I want to cast a barrage on them. And then if you're fancy, you can pray, you can flick. Like, if you're flicking the jad, you can flick like that. But I wouldn't. I would just tank the melees. Then, now, next phase of combat, normally, if you're learning, you probably wouldn't do it that fast, so you would wait for another set before proccing the next phase, but since I'm pretty confident that my Tebow popped the F off too, uh, I'm going to get it as, I'm, I'm just going to proc the wave as soon as I want. Now, you want to proc that, you want to proc that on one of the sides, either the left side or the right side, I think that's going to be enough. Okay, nice. So, see, redemption. 
So I click, click two tiles, click two tiles, click two tiles, click two tiles. Wait a second, from there you can hit that one. Click two tiles, click two tiles, click two tiles, click two tiles, click. You can go a little further than the regular safe spot. That way only one of them can hit you. Play two tiles. Don't you want to be ahead of the shield more than behind the shield? Like right now, I kind of fell behind a little bit. Use your blowpipe specs. Use your blowpipe specs. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta brew up a little bit here. Don't trip out, guys. Like these guys have almost zero defense. You can keep hitting them, uh, even if you're brewed down like super hard. So don't trip about like uh, about using a super restore. Obviously, like do it because. That way you can, uh, if you're far like that, you can hit it with your T-Bow once. You want to get it down like as fast as possible. Once again, switch to your blowpipe. Okay, so now, here. A little tick I have, a little tip I have for the shield. If you don't want to have to like follow through, you want to step to the next safe spot directly. Is when the shield goes back, if you're, when you're on the last tile of the shield, like that, you can go to the next one and it's good. Last tile of the shield. Now you want to be careful. It's mostly important like on the start, like on the start. As you'll see, like, look, when I'm standing on the last tile of the shield, like that, I can go to the next one, maybe sip a stamina. And you still want to keep up with it. Like you can't always move to the next safe spot. You gotta keep up with your shield a little more. But on the side, on the sides though, that 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 guideline, I found that guideline does work. So you wait. Last style. And then look at my movement. That's the way I do it. I don't know if it's a, you know, if it's the most efficient. That's what I've been doing for 300 some KC since I started flicking. That's it. That's it. Yo, it's crazy. My, my Inferno runs, even during the guide. That's actually crazy. Even during the guide. There are two hours. Almost, almost two, always two hours and 22 minutes. So there you go, guys. You just, uh, you just made your way uh, through the Inferno, hopefully, for your first game. Or for, you know, uh, maybe you picked up some additional tips. Some additional tips and tricks for uh, for your your more than first Inferno KC if you're um, if you're um, going for that if you're going for like combat achievements or uh, if you're pet hunting and stuff like that uh, I appreciate you for taking the time uh, to help yourself in the Inferno and uh, also once again guys I will kindly ask everybody watching this if you want to help out a boy I am a full time streamer I am a full time content creator. It means a lot if you hit the like, the subscribe button, and if you drop a comment below, help me with the algorithm. It is free. It takes a second of your time. And I appreciate it very much. Uh, if you want to tune into the Twitch, twitch.tv slash dearlola1. I always love to hear about my students and their progress. And yes, I call you guys my students because I like it. It makes me feel like a, makes me feel like a, a uni professor. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, yo. Y'all game, baby. Best game. I'm glad I finally did that. I've been, it's, it's what, like August now? I've been saying I was going to record my 2023 guide since January. So shout out everybody on my stream too. Right now, I'm going to catch up with the chat in a second. Uh, of course. Uh, everybody, man. Shout out game, baby. Two, two, two. And until next time.